It's the political season and everybody's irrational. So to help me break down why we are also irrational when it comes to this election season in politics, uh, you've heard him here before. He's a professor at Ohio State University, uh, well-known author and speaker, among many other things, Dr. Gleb Sapersky. Dr. Sapersky, welcome back to the show. Thanks. I really appreciate you having me back, Ethan. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think this is really an important topic, actually, because I yes. truly believe that people have lost their minds uh, this election <laughs> season. And so you help us understand why in this article. It's really fantastic. All right. Uh, um, so we have two. You talk about two different systems and one of kind of is more the factual one. One is the more emotional one. Help explain these two systems to me. Sure, happy to do so. So research shows that we have two systems of thinking, what are called the autopilot or system one. Thinking that's the emotional, intuitive one, that's the older system, the one that gets us out of the way when a car is about to hit us and we don't know why we jumped out of the way, but we do. So that's the system that helped protect us against the saber-toothed tigers in the savanna. That's the older system. The newer system that developed after we began to live in tribes is called System 2, the intentional system. Now, this is the logical, rational system that analyzes why we do what we do, helps us interact with other people. This system takes much more effort to turn on and use than the emotional, intuitive system. It's responsible for maybe about 20% of our decision-making, and the emotional system takes about couple of milliseconds to turn on the autopilot system, while the intentional system takes about a second to turn on. So it's much easier and much less effort to use the autopilot system. And this is the system that we tend to use most of the time. This is especially the case with heated topics like elections and politics, when we tend to revert to our emotions and be motivated by them. So we can go in depth into these, but this is the overview of the systems. And and now we and forever in my mind we've had politicians that take full advantage of this whether they consciously knew mm -hmm. about the autopilot system versus the intentional system or not we clearly have two candidates who leverage that uh, to their advantage and their followers are susceptible to it because the, like you said the one operates in in milliseconds it's not a conscious effort the autopilot system so uh, how are they being so effective. Or what are they doing that's so effective to reach the autopilot system and, and have us ignore the intentional system? Yes, so this is a, one of those questions. First of all, you asked the question of whether people, whether the politicians are aware of this. Now, we know that both politicians, uh, Hillary Clinton talks often about behavioral science insights and how that shapes people. We know that Trump is a performer, is a strategist, and I'm sure he read some in research on the psychology of persuasion. So we have some evidence that both candidates are aware of it. To what extent they're aware, I don't know. But we do have some evidence that they're aware. Now, how these things shape us? Let's take some examples. So from the last debate, uh, there was a really interesting moment when Hillary Clinton called Trump Putin's puppet. Now, well, what happens when we hear the term Putin's puppet? We have this instant association because our mind, our System one is a pattern matching system. It matches patterns to each other. So it matches Trump to Putin and Trump to puppet. The puppet association is inherently negative. Nobody likes being a puppet or called a puppet. And uh, Putin is, for most Americans, also negative. So there is a phenomenon called Horn's effect, where if we associate, we ha where if we have a negative association with something, we transfer it to something else. We can see an example of when uh, there are attractive male or female models standing next to a car uh, in a commercial. Now, there is no particular reason why an attractive male or female model standing next to a car should make the car better. But the, from the psychology of persuasion, marketers know that having an attractive male or female model next to the car will transfer that person's attractiveness, the halo effect, to the car. The same works in reverse. If we have negative associations with something, it will be transferred to the other person. So that's an example of the horns and halo effect. We have another example uh, that Trump uses very frequently, which is called the mere exposure effect or the illusion of truth effect. Now, 
this comes from the repetition of something making us feel that that statement is true. For example, Trump very often says that NAFTA is the worst trade deal ever, ever, ever. And he repeats it, repeats it, repeats it, despite evidence showing that it's far from the worst trade deal ever. He keeps repeating it. People believe it because he repeats it so often that it seems to be true because we have uh, what's called cognitive ease with it. That statement is familiar to us, and therefore it feels comfortable, and therefore it feels true, regardless of whether it is true or not. So that's an example of how Trump uses our cognitive biases against us. So, Dr. Zipersky, I, uh, we're going to run out of time, but I, if you can quickly tell me, how do we protect ourselves, though, from that? So how do I get my intentional system to override my autopilot system when I'm told it's the worst deal ever, ever, ever repeatedly? How do I protect myself? Right. So the only way to protect yourself really is to learn about the cognitive biases that are plague us, because if we don't know about them, we can't figure it out. So one of the things that I do, I'm, uh, you said I'm many things, I'm a professor, I'm also an author and social entrepreneur, I run the organization Intentional Insights, and at intentionalinsights.org, we have a number of articles that talk about the kind of cognitive biases that plague us, such as the mere exposure effect or the halo and horns effect, and how to fight against them. And there are so many others that I describe in the article. The way, the only way to combat these is to learn about them and to develop strategies of avoiding them. For example, I know that if Trump or somebody keeps repeating the same thing over and over to me, I will tend to be biased toward that thing. And then I notice that and I say, wait, this will bias me. I'm not going to specifically like the thing just because of this repetition. So you need to know about these things and watch out for them. All right. So a conscious effort on our part is how we protect ourselves. Dr. Gleb Sapersky, great to have you back on. Thanks for your insight, as always. Thank you so much for having me back, Ethan. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. Really, really appreciate it. All right. Well, coming up next hour, we're going to kick it off. Oh, yes. The health insurance costs outpacing family income growth. David Radley, senior scientist, Commonwealth Fund, is going to join me. We have San Francisco Symphony tickets, Prop 60, CEO Spotlight, and more. That's coming up. I'm Ethan Behrman, KGO 810.